Okay, let's just get started. So welcome back to another session of MTOP Live. My name is Annika. I'm a customer success engineer here at Entopology. Um, and today we have what I think is a pretty exciting new feature. Um, in our latest release, 2.12, we came out with some back to CAD uh, features. And so this is a new feature that I think will allow for a greater integration within your design process. So whether you're starting in a traditional CAD um, software, bringing that into NTOP, doing some things like topology optimization, um, and then seeing where we can go from there. So, so far we're able to do that topology optimization, but let's say you want to take that part even further, make it maybe bring it back into that traditional CAD software, maybe um, put it in a PLM software, maybe some CAM software. Um, by taking this topology optimized part and turning it back into a CAD part, we'll be able to better round out that design process. Um, and so in this case, we're working from a topology optimization. Some of you might be familiar with TopOp. If not, we do have a TopOp workshop next Thursday. So be sure to check out our website so you can register for that. Um, but for those familiar or not familiar with TopOp within the software, um, just a quick little run through of what we did here. Starting off with some kind of assembly. Here we have um, a robot arm that's part of a larger assembly. We've defined restrained faces, as you can see is what's highlighted here, these two faces along here, um, and defined loaded faces. And by running that through a topology optimization, meshing this, defining those, those boundary conditions, we were able to come up with this topology optimized part. Um, but within NTOP, we can do a little bit post-processing within there. Um, here we have some rough surfaces that we can quickly just smoothen out with a smoothened body block. And then actually use some Boolean operations to bring back our original parts and make sure it, it fits to what we want. Um, and usually before we had this um, back to CAD option, we would end with this implicit body, maybe mesh that and get it out as an STL or a 3MF. Now with our back to CAD conversion, we can actually turn this into a CAD part that has um, these patches along here that we can get back into different CAD software. So for a little bit of background on how this process actually works. So we have our implicit body. So that's our native CAD, or sorry, native end top body. So this field representation of a body nice and light. Then we're taking that to a triangle surface mesh, uh, which a lot of us are familiar with, triangular meshing, um, and then bringing that into a quad surface mesh. So there are a couple of refinement steps along the way that I'll go through briefly, but from that quad mesh, we can read that through the software to close up some of those pad, um, some, some of those gaps, bring together some of those quads to bring this nice um, patchwork that we can then export as either a step file or a parasolid file. And let's see. So as far as how that actually works within the software, um, we're using a few different blocks here. So here I have it set up and we can walk through this block by block. So the first one I have is a mesh from implicit body where I can define a feature size and adaptivity. Um, but as you can see by the wireframe here, we've got some smaller Part, um, smaller triangles over here and larger depending on the feature size. So what we like to do usually is remesh that surface kind of even it out. So we have a nice even mesh, um, easier for it to read in as we quadrangulate that mesh. So here we still have these triangular pieces and now we want to have quads. So if I go to my quadrangulate mesh block, so this is a new mesh, a new block within the software, we have a couple of different options, as you can see down here. Um, if you're ever curious about what these options are, you can always jump into our information panel here. Um, and here you see we have some descriptions for each of our inputs. So we're bringing in a mesh. We're thinking about target count. So how many quads do we want spread across this mesh? Thinking about adaptivity. So if we have a higher adaptivity, um, it's going to capture some curvature a little bit better whether or not you want sharp features, 
Flow angle is going to have to do with some of how we're handling those edges. Um, and then symmetry, if you have any symmetry within your part, um, that'll simplify the meshing process. And so now we have a pretty nice mesh here. But what I'm going to do is actually bring that into a refined mesh block. And as you'll see, that, that count went up by a lot. So now we have much smaller quads um, along this surface. And so I went through refinement three times. So we're running through, taking each of those quads, breaking it down even further. And what that, what that is allowing is for us to really grab onto some of those features so that we have a nice smooth along here um, to pick up on whatever features we have within. Um, so then once we go to the next step of actually taking that mesh and turning it into a CAD body, it's really reading along everything to close up those patches um, and create these faces. So from here, I can go in, grab an export part block, or I can bring in my CAD body I can define a path to where I want it saved um, and then save it to my desktop, save it to anywhere on my computer. And from there, I could jump into whatever CAD software I typically work with, bring that part within um, and can go on and do any additional um, operations that are needed. Maybe I want to do some Boolean operations, clean up some of the edges or shell the part. Some, some of the um, operations that we want to do in CAD, we can quickly bring that in um, and manipulate further from there. Maybe bring it together with another CAD part that we have so we can kind of complete that cycle or perhaps bring it into a CAM software so we can have a little more flexibility when um, going into the manufacturing process, depending on what your design process looks like and what those steps are, the types of bodies we need to bring into there. So by having this as a CAD part um, makes things a little bit simpler. Um, but in this case, I went from an implicit body that we generated within NTOP. However, if you have external softwares that you're using for topology optimization, um, we can also bring those meshes into NTOP um, and turn them into CAD bodies as well. So if you see here, I have this imported mesh. This is just from an external software. Um, and you'll see the mesh, um, if I go into the properties tab here, we'll notice that the mesh um, is not manifold. And in order to quadrangulate and turn it into a CAD body, we do need it to be manifold. So one nice tip that I sometimes like is actually using an, a voxel grid as an intermediate step. So I can do a voxel grid from mesh. And what that is, is just reading in the mesh and creating um, more of a watertight body. Um, that's reading off of voxel size, as you can see in these kind of features here. And then creating a mesh from that voxel grid. Um, here we have it as more even because we're reading from a voxel grid. So I'm going directly into that quadrangulate mesh step, refining that mesh again. So now we have those smaller pieces and then creating the CAD body from there. So this is an example of where I have maybe an external top up that I want to bring back into uh, another software that we want as a CAD part. So I'm able to bring that into NTOP, uh, go through a couple of blocks to create that CAD body. So, I mean, these are just two examples of topology optimization, whether it's an internal topology optimization or an external top up. But really with this capability, we're able to do lots of different kinds of meshes. Let's say you had a 3D scan that you brought in and you wanna turn that into a CAD part as well. You can easily just bring that into our environment here, go through these steps and create a CAD body from there. So there's a lot of flexibility. Um, this um, process was designed so that we could really grab onto these topology optimization parts. However, um, it is worth exploring with other geometries. Um, if you're able to get a nice mesh from a geometry, then most likely we can, uh, or it's possible that we can get that into a CAD body as well. But a lot of it is just playing around with things, working with these different inputs that we have here to really hone in on um, the, the features and the type that you're, you're grabbing from there. Um, but 
for a little more information on this, if you check out our support site, we do have a nice article here that dives a little further into each of the blocks here. Um, so if you are exploring and seeing what parts you can turn into CAD parts, I definitely recommend checking this out so you can really walk through these steps here um, along with this nice support site tutorial. Um, you can, I, I just pulled that up, but you can access that um, through the software by going to the Help Center. Um, but yeah, I think this was a pretty simple um, and top live, but just to show off a very exciting new feature that we have. Um, I know everyone at NTOP is very excited about it and um, really interested in seeing the kinds of parts that people are gonna be able to get back into CAD and then also understand what from there you're doing with that. Um, so curious about that, we'd love to hear about that. Um, any, if anyone has any questions, I'll, I'll hang on here for a couple more minutes. Um, but yeah, that's, that's basically it for today. Um, as always, we have many NTOP lives happening Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays at 11 p.m. Also, all of our current NTOP lives or past NTOP lives are on our YouTube and on our website as well. So I encourage you to check those out um, for maybe some inspiration as you're playing around with NTOP or diving into specific applications. All right, doesn't look like we have any questions coming in. Um, so I'll leave it at that. Again, my name is Annika and I hope you enjoyed our NTAP Live today. Thank you. <laughs>